Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be restoring an old IPEX Pentium 4 desktop computer. And this is made possible in collaboration with Electronic Recycling Australia. They're one of the leading e-waste recyclers here in South Australia who assist with and provide people with disabilities ongoing employment. So let's take a look at this old machine. Here is the IPEX branded desktop from either 2002 or early 2003. This beige machine has without a doubt been sitting around for quite some time. As you can see, the dust buildup is pretty high. At the heart of this machine is a Pentium 4 processor, one that the case says runs at 2 GHz. On the front there's also a volume knob, USB and audio outputs. Strangely enough it appears that the front audio doesn't connect to the motherboard directly. It runs through the system, out the back and into the rear audio jacks. And at the rear it looks like there's either rust or someone spilt chocolate milk at some point. The shield in front of the ports is also quite dirty. In fact, the whole exterior of the machine is in dire need of a good cleaning. Cracking it open is thankfully pretty easy, as is the case with most standard desktops of this time period. The inside has definitely fared a lot better than the exterior. The bent metal can now be straightened up and the dust can be removed. Not only does this have a 128 megabyte GeForce FX5200, it's also got a vertically mounted 20 gigabyte hard disk, meaning there are two hard drives in total, the second one hiding away underneath the DVD-ROM drive. This computer made it into a public school thanks to the CRS, which stands for Computer Recycling Scheme. And for all I know, this could be one of the actual machines that was in the primary school I went to, because we had these exact same IPEX boxes. So let's see if it turns on at the very least. Pretty quickly it says that Windows failed to start. I then went into the BIOS to see what was being detected. The processor was registering as only 1.4 GHz, which is slower than expected. Either way, I was told to wipe the hard drives in here, so let's try installing a fresh copy of Windows XP. Although we've got a bit of a problem. The DVD drive isn't even detected in the BIOS, let alone the second hard drive. I opened it back up and what do you know, one of the IDE cables was not plugged in correctly. Now when plugged in it simply boots straight into Windows 7. I then went through and wiped the hard drives as instructed, installing a copy of Windows XP Pro. This is what it would have originally come installed with. I still need to install drivers, but it does at the very least work. It shows up as both 2.8GHz and also 1.4GHz. I'm sure the reason will become apparent when we take it apart. Now that I know it's working, I think we should give it a clean with a healthy dose of eucalyptus oil. This computer has been sitting in my shed for a few weeks now, and I've been simply itching to clean it off. Just look at how much dirt is built up on top. The permanent marker on top suggests this computer was number 39 with a Pentium 4 processor and 2GB of RAM. After letting the eucalyptus oil soak in, it began to lift the writing. I continued to spray on a small amount, removing a bit more each time, and finally it was gone. There were a few tough stains on top which came out pretty easily with some Ajax spray and wipe. Now we get to see the real shade of white that this outer casing has. The Nvidia FX 5200 was a pretty average graphics card even when it came out in 2003. I made sure to take photos of how all the front panel LEDs and switches were plugged into the motherboard as it'll save some time when I go to reassemble it. I remember identical IPEX computers back when I went to primary school, they even had the same DVD-ROM drive. And here's the 40GB Samsung Spinpoint hard drive I installed Windows XP on. It was manufactured back in July of 2002. The power supply looks to be Mini ATX. Not only is it small, the output is only 200 watts. And after removing two Phillips head screws, the motherboard can be pushed back and lifted out of the case. The front bezel was also easy to unclip. This thankfully isn't directly attached to the LEDs or switches. IPEX created a single board that handles the front I.O. and powers the stereo speakers on the front of the case. To control the volume, there's a sizable pot, which is short for potentiometer, a type of variable resistor. Quite a bit of dust had built up behind the front plastic and one of the clips had a big crack in it. On the front, there were a number of marks that suggested it was moved around a lot. Using some cut and polish, I tried to remove the marks or at least reduce their visibility. Plastics like this are prone to scrapes and thankfully, with a bit of time and effort, come up looking pretty clean. With all the components removed, I could finally dust out the case, which was now very light. The bottom still had all the feet. It's pretty common for at least one of these to fall off after nearly 20 years. These do appear to be glued on and they have shifted slightly. A bit of Ajax got all the years worth of grime off though. The rear of the machine will need a bit more work. I took off the PCI covers and IO shield, which are looking pretty grimy. 
To straighten the corner that was dented in, I simply bent the metal with a pair of pliers. The fact that this was out of place probably explains why the case didn't fit on all that well. The surface of the metal had begun to tarnish. I applied some cut and polish to sand it off. Off camera, I ended up doing a few more passes, which definitely helped. You'll see in the end of the video. This motherboard is actually made by Intel. The 2 gigabytes of DDR memory in this system has a clock speed of 400 megahertz, but the motherboard can only run as fast as 266, so the RAM is also throttled in a sense. Now we get a look at exactly what the processor is. Clearly it's not the original 2 gigahertz one, and once the thermal paste is cleaned off, I can see that it is a 2.8 gigahertz SL6Z5 one core two thread Pentium 4. So this CPU has an 800 megahertz front side bus. While this motherboard only supports front side buses of 400 and 533 megahertz with certain CPUs, essentially meaning the CPU is downclocked to half its speed, hence why it's only showing up as 1.4 gigahertz instead of 2.8. Looking on eBay, I did find a good replacement CPU that'll fit at a later date. It's pretty funny that someone went to the effort of upgrading the original 2GHz CPU only for the system to run at an even lower 1.4GHz speed. Either way, the cooling system that's in here should adequately cool the P4. With a generous application of thermal paste, the heatsink can go back on. And after letting the metal I.O. shield sit in some Ajax spray and wipe, it looks a whole lot cleaner. This did a great job at lifting the grease and unwanted material. Just remember how bad it looked before. While the machine is apart, I thought I'd also clean off the graphics card. Released in early 2003, the FX5200 features 128 megabytes of DDR video memory. The suggested retail price was only $69.99. GPU prices have definitely increased quite a bit since then. A new application of thermal paste is always a good idea, although this chip never really ran that hot considering it didn't require a fan. To clean off the tarnished backplate, I unscrewed it from the VGA and DVI ports, and left it to soak in some spray and wipe. While that was happening, I went over the other ports on the motherboard to try and remove some of the corrosion that had built up. And there we have a very clean looking GPU. Since the clock battery has died, I simply replaced it with another CR2032. These batteries are very cheap and easy to find online. The front bezels of the DVD-ROM drive haven't yellowed, they're just a bit dirty. I let them soak in some spray and wipe, which should remove the grime caused by constant touching. There was a bit of a scrape that came off with the use of some cut and polish, and normally I'd replace the eject mechanism's drive belt, but this one uses a series of gears connected directly to the motor. That's looking a whole lot cleaner. The power supply has also accumulated its fair share of dust. It sucks in air from inside the system and blows it out the back. I gave it a dust off to remove any built up inside. Always be very careful not to touch any exposed circuitry with your bare hand. And that's looking quite dust free once again. Now here comes the fun part, reassembling this old desktop. I made my best effort to tuck away the cables as neatly as possible, but this case wasn't exactly made with cable management in mind. I did use some cable ties as well, but there's only so much you can do. And here's the result of my work, a much cleaner looking desktop. While there's nothing remarkable about this machine, it's cool to see it looking new once again. The IPEX brand had been around in Australia since the early 80s, and at its peak employed over 700 people, and almost half of their sales were to government and education sectors, which is why you never really saw them on sale to the general public. In fact, in 1991 they sold over $5 million worth of computers to the USSR's Ministry of Defense, but by late 2008 IPEX wound down after failing to sell. The business had been in decline for a few years, downsizing after a hostile takeover. They really couldn't stay competitive with other enterprise manufacturers, but it's always sad to hear of yet another local business going under. So, now that it's clean, let's try using this old Australian-made computer. First of all, let's try running Grand Theft Auto 3. Even though the processor is running at half speed, GTA 3 plays very well. And the next game is Star Wars Battlefront 2, released in 2005. This game is a little more demanding, it really does struggle, even on low graphical settings. Old school RuneScape feels pretty right to play on this old machine. It does run, but the frame rate isn't very smooth. It's still playable though. Minecraft Java Edition kind of works. I could get it running on older versions from a few years ago, but there's still quite a few graphical problems. Give you a rough idea of where to go at least. Another demanding game is Far Cry, released in 2004. On low to medium settings, this runs fine and honestly holds up pretty well visually. I'd be curious to see how this runs when the CPU upgrade arrives. Of course, much older games run great. 
I do love playing some Monster Truck Madness too. I spent many hours as a kid playing the demo because I never owned the full game. As far as benchmarking goes, the hard disks are not very fast at all. The 40GB one has read and write speeds of about 30 megabytes per second, with the 20GB one being slightly faster at around 40 megabytes per second. Browsing the web was also a very slow affair on modern websites. Even though this desktop isn't particularly powerful or even that unique, I definitely had a lot of fun. Thank you very much for watching. It was honestly such a cool trip down memory lane using one of these computers. I have these really vivid memories of using one of these in the school library. Also, thanks again to Electronic Recycling Australia for making this possible by giving me this computer. They actually also sell affordable refurbished computers on their website that I've linked in the description below. So, take it easy and I'll see you in the next video.